record. So um, it's just Jane and I will have our mics on during it. So everyone, if everyone can, as I say, mute their mic and put any questions in the chat box, I'll keep an eye on that. And I'm going to hand over to Jane, who's going to do the quick, the quick health and safety. Yeah. We get yeah. This is this is a bit of a toxic one, isn't it? It is. So obviously the first thing to do is before you start making anything, make sure that your preparation areas are covered in newspaper or cut plastic bags, just anything to help protect surfaces. If you work in the kitchen like I do, when you're using the plaster, make sure that any food around is covered or protected because powder dust does get into the air and it's not a good thing to swallow it. Um, you need a certain amount of protective equipment for yourself. You don't have to don this immediately, but you need the gloves that we see everywhere that are disposable. So the moment you start to work with the actual plaster, you need to make sure you cover these. If your skin is sensitive in any way, then it's best also to use these when you're dealing with the salt and sand. Salt and sand are very abrasive and my hands have definitely got dried out using them. So um, that's just a heads up on that one. You need a mask of some sort. These are the disposable ones, which I presume most people have by now. This one is the better one because it has like a filter inside. So that really protects you. But if you don't have it, this is your next best option. I haven't got a pair of safety goggles goggles to my shame I'm sure I have in the garage somewhere but I can't get in the garage at the moment so when you're working with the plaster make sure you have if it's plain spectacles I've got my reading ones on just something to protect your eyes and the other thing to understand about plaster is if you work it in the right way it's not at all harmful however it does contain chemicals and I have heard of an A-level student who lost nearly both of her hands when she tried to take a plaster cast of them in the classroom because plaster creates a heat when it's combined with water and it hardens quite quickly. So please don't insert any of your body parts into plaster. The best way if you want to do that is to make an alginate mold and there's loads of YouTubes on the internet. So um, before you do anything, I would advise you research um, a bit of health and safety on the plaster because the last thing I want is any accidents. So that's my bit so far about health and safety. Has anyone got any questions they want to ask at this point? No? Okay, well, we'll move on then. So the next piece is have a container that you're going to put salt or sand into. And um, it can be anything at all. I mean, Leslie, as you see, you can see she's got a Pyrex thing. Now she's covering it in foil because I assume, Leslie, that you're going to use this Pyrex dish again for cooking, are you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I so, plan to use it again. I don't plan to throw it away. So yeah. So you, you do have to be very careful about using any equipment that you want <laughs> to use for cooking again, because um, there are chemicals that remain on it. So it definitely needs to be protected. So as you can see, Leslie's lining her dish with foil and carefully protecting it. I've double foil. I've double foiled, Jane. Yes, you have I've double, double foil layer to be absolutely <laughs> sure. You can use anything. It depends on the size of frame you want to make. So obviously the container has to be slightly larger than any frame that you've prepared or you're thinking of doing. So here I've just got a standard takeaway foil dish that I've I've washed up. Here's a celebrations old tin old shoe box you don't need fancy materials or anything for this other than the very basic plaster and salt or sand and 
as Leslie's done, if you're going to use a cardboard box, so it could be an Amazon box, um, do line it with foil, even if you're going to dispose of it, if it's cardboard, because the moment you wet salt or sand, it's going to drain into the cardboard and the cardboard starts to go floppy. So if the, if the cardboard starts to shift, then it could affect your mold once you've made it as the plaster's poured in because it's soggy. So if you're using cardboard, just line it with foil for that reason. Um, I just want to show you the difference between salt and sand and also want to explain slightly why it's salt and sand because you can create casts out of um, clay or other materials. I've used ash before, but the reason I'm doing this workshop is because I have initiated the idea of a fundraising art exhibition, which many of you I know are going to contribute to. And thank you very much for offering to do that. This workshop doesn't commit you to it. It's a free workshop. And if you're just work, watching to learn things, that's fine. Um, but if you do want to join in uh, the fundraising exhibition, it's for NHS charities together. Um, and I was moved to do it because A, I lost my husband and B, I could see all the mental health issues coming out of the NHS staff situation. So I just wanted to help towards that. And the idea was to make a plaster cast frame and have literally hundreds of these adorning the walls, which will be sold to the public. <coughs> I'm not an expert in plaster casting at all. I did it once as a student on a foundation course and aside from my experimenting in home that is my sum of experience I'm not looking for masterpieces I am looking for things that um, you know we could sell reasonably um, but the idea is just to have fun on this course so the difference between salt and sand I don't know how well you're going to see this but sand creates a very grainy texture and will be slightly more yellow than salt. I don't know how well you can see that really, I'm trying to get a light even closer. This is salt, this is sand. Excuse me, I can, I can feel the salt coming into my throat here. The sand, the, sorry, the salt will pick up when you do a plaster cast. The salt gets embedded into the plaster and the beauty of it, it starts to grow crystals. So you get an even whiter effect. And these crystals gradually grow over time, I've discovered. So that in itself, from an art point of view is really interesting. Leslie, you will find after this session that the salt grows up the foil. It will grow on cardboard. And so salt is a really fascinating material to work with. Sand, as I say, has um, a grainy texture and this has all sorts of connotations. Sand, you know, is typically biblical in terms of the shifting sands, which is what, our times are at the moment, they're shifting and unstable at the moment. Um, it produces a grainy texture, but it can also be reminiscent of very happy memories on a beach. Salt obviously has connotations of purification. Um, it also can relate to the idea of tears because when you cry all that's left on your face after the tears have gone is salt. Um, there's pillars of salt from the biblical story of Lot's wife so it can be considered like in a way a punishment so <laughs> how however you want to use it in an artistic sense might um, determine which material you use. Sorry, I'm going to have to take a drink here. <laughs> so having said that, we'll get on to the practical process. So Leslie, 
and anyone else who is participating. If you get your I prepared dish, a dish, get your prepar prepared dish and start putting, pouring the salt in, Leslie. And what you want is a good depth because you're trying to create an impression into the salt. So how it, the depth needs to be at least a centimetre deeper than the impression you're going to make. Right, when you do the salt, put your glasses and your mask on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can taste it in my mouth already. Yeah. I'm just trying to take the... I, I um, these I Jebson, Jebson's love me because I bought all these individual... No, I'm going to have to use the... Yeah, Tesco's comes in, you know, very cheap bags. So and... it's 45p for yeah. a 450 kg, excuse the dog. It is a cheap material, so... Yeah, this is, so I've used one of these and it's 45 pence for one of these. <coughs> we lost Fran, so... I admit Fran back in, someone said something in the chat. Does it matter what type of sand, Jane? Oh, it does get up your throat. Yeah, it does. Definitely yeah, it's definitely got, got up mine. Because <laughs> that's really gone. And it's not, the, it's not good salt either, is it? Because it's table salt. It's not good for you. So it's not like lovely, good, well. So yeah, make sure you wear, your, I'll show you, I'm wearing my, hang on a minute, I'll move up to my face cam. I'm using, I'm wearing my mask, but it's still going underneath there. And that's just putting the salt in. So you do have to be super careful with this because I can feel that in my, in my mouth already. But that's yeah. in my little Pyrex dish, that's one of these 750 gram containers of salt. I, <laughs> I was a very good girl. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six of these. I probably don't need them. If anyone else wants some, let me know. Um, yeah. But they were also selling at Jensen's a massive tub of it for like, I think it was 600, um, six, six kg in total, no, no kg. Um, six kg in total and it was only like three pounds or something so it's not an expensive material but it is like mm, not nice so yeah if you're using sand Leslie you asked what um yeah. you know is there a specific there is casting sand and you can easily get it on Amazon um if you can't afford the casting sand then really any sand you can cast on the beach if you want to there are youtubes that show people like pressing shells or other forms into um, the beach and they take their materials in a bag and mix up the plaster and pour it on the beach so as long as you clean up properly after you remove all plaster um, on the beach you can cast into the beach and if you the cat can be cast in life <laughs> have paw prints is that enough so that's 750 in there can you see how deep that is there is that enough um the easiest way to test it leslie is to take an object that the deepest object you plan to press into it if that's what you're doing mm -hmm. and see if it goes down to the floor now if it does you need a bit more salt on well no it doesn't okay so that's enough yeah. Now, the next thing you do is you want to firm up the salt or the sand by pouring water onto it. Now, don't do what I did. I got a jug. Do I need my gloves on yet or am I all right without gloves? You're all right at the moment. I got a jug of water and poured the whole lot in in one go. And then my salt was like concrete. <laughs> so I've got my jug of water. Here's my jug of water. So what do you want me to do? Just pour a little bit in. Just pour a little bit in and then take a fork. Fork. Oh, you can a fork. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Or, you, or your spoon is fine. Or your spoon. Oh, I'll find an, I found an old fork. <laughs> and what you're doing is you're looking for a crumbly texture like snow. Oh, okay. And um, when you've got the texture right, you need to smooth it with the back of a spoon so that you're getting a fairly level surface. It doesn't have to be perfect because this will be the back of the frame. 
So the top is the back of the frame. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be level so that the plaster doesn't drift to one area as opposed to another. Um, so I'm new to this people, so just bear with. <laughs> No idea how much. I'm literally doing it for the first time ever because I thought that was the best way not to preempt it and to yeah absolutely and if you're using sand then if you think what uh, the sand on a beach is like say about 10 minutes after the tide's gone out that's the mm -hmm. kind of consistency that you're looking for so not absolutely saturated um, otherwise, you won't have a good impression. Just How firm it, enough. Is that about the right kind of texture? Now, the easiest way to test, Leslie, is ah. put your finger in oh, and God. see see if it holds the impression of your finger. Now, yeah, if you've got in. if you've got sensitive skin, Leslie, put your gloves on. Right, I'm going to do that because I have. But also, I don't <laughs> like mess. I was a terrible child. I hate mess. Right, okay. look, I've had to get gardening gloves. Gardening gloves, everyone. Right. That's probably why I'm doing it, Leslie, because my family say I'm the messiest one in the house. Right, no, that, <laughs> that holds the impression, so that's good. Right, okay, that's good. So that didn't take very much water. It's like making, it's like doing a pie. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it is. It is a bit like cooking. Okay, so because uh, I'm a perfectionist, obviously it has to. Oh no, your out. your cat doesn't want to eat the saw. <laughs> no, out, out, Coco. Okay. So this is going to be a film that everyone's going to watch because they'd be amused by what the cat does. Uh, so if you, you want to get into you can see, do things with cats, <laughs> Leslie's got an apron on, so you uh -huh. can use, make sure you've got old clothes and an apron on to protect yourself Which from my video your just clothes. You can see me again for a minute. Look, so I've got my advisor covering my face and my eyes, and I've got my brand new apron I bought from my husband. <laughs> now, no okay. can reveal that I'm using this apron. Have you, have you got it how you want it, Leslie? Yes, I have. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, and you've flattened to the top with the back of a spoon. Yeah, all flat, look. Excellent, well done. Oh, do I get a gold car? The thing you've got to think about when you're making, um, when you're casting into salt and sand, if you think of a Mott and Bailey castle, so the Mott is the hill bit, and that will be where your void or the centre of your frame is. Now, the void doesn't have to be central. It doesn't have to be big. It can be small, it can be to one side. It just depends on what you are choosing to make. But obviously for the exhibition, we're looking for the sense of a frame. It doesn't have to be backed like a frame for the exhibition, or we're looking for, for the plaster cast and a hanger to go in the back so that we can hang it on the wall. So if you think of it more like a piece of sculpture rather than a frame, but we're looking for a void in it because when somebody passes on, that's what they leave. They leave a void in life. So you have to decide how you're representing that void. Now, wherever, wherever your void is going on the frame, so your hole in the picture frame, that will be where you're creating a hill. So the plaster will swirl round it. And the trench or the, the, the bit, the dip, the moat going round will be your actual plaster cast frame. So Leslie, what have you chosen to make an impression into the sand with? Not the cat. <laughs> <laughs> So I've got lots of little bits and pieces. I'll just put up the camera so you can see my face for a minute. So that, oh no, not that one. You, we've lost you, okay. Leslie. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah. Okay, so I'm sorry, okay. I, hit the wrong, That's fine. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> the cameras. So I've got like a little heart that my granny gave me. Yeah. And um, a cross that, because she was Catholic. Yeah. And then I've got a little, so my dad was in the in the navy and he did smoke. It was a long time ago. So I've got a little um, lighter with a tassel on. 
Okay. And my nan, who I absolutely adored, um, always wanted to go to the beach and the sea, so I've got seashells. Yeah. And then I've got a letter S for my name, Sam's. Yeah. And I've got some feathers because I always, when I see the feathers, I always think about my um, dad and my nan who I lost um, to this to this coil, mortal coil, and a key. Yeah, okay, that's fine. You, just to point out, you don't have to press objects in. You can make your own piece of artwork using cardboard built up. Um, any cheap materials that you can make a design as long as it's fairly hard because what you're doing is pressing it into the sand or the salt. So if you've got something soft like leaves, then that may be harder to create an impression because they're so, so soft. So you've got to think, how can you harden the leaves? Maybe put glue over the top, some, some way of hardening them so that they will leave a firm. Oh dear. Simple is best when you're starting off. So if you've never done this before, choose a simple rather than complex um, design or piece of... Um, is, mine simple, is mine simple, Jane, or is that really difficult that I've chosen to do? Sorry? Is mine simple or difficult? I think <laughs> yours is simple, Leslie, yeah. So... <laughs> Phew! <laughs> Before, before you start doing your impressions, yeah. Leslie, I'm going to challenge you now. Could you put up... You want me to screen one? share, don't you? Picture one. Okay, hang on a minute. Picture one. Okay, let's see what happens. Pray for me, people. Right. So I'm, I just want to show you here. Right. I've made an impression and I, I don't think I've got it here, unfortunately, but I used the lid of a heart shaped pill box that my mother used to use. And it had a very simple leaf impression on it. And I did just did four, almost like a four leaf clover. And then I just used a matchstick to put a design in between. Now to make my mot or the, the void, I used um, a cork and I chose a small hole because it's quite a long time now since she died. And so I feel my grieving process is, is beginning to close. And so that was my reasoning behind it. Leslie, could you move on to image two? Okay, so I'm going to have to, I'm not very adept at this, so we can all have no, to do it. No, that's fine. Do it as I go. So I think I have to, hang on a sec. So image two, I've got them all in a thing. I just have to open them all. So image two, there we go. Right, okay. So I'll share my screen with image two. Yeah, as I say, bear with. <laughs> image two, share. And then okay, this, this one I went for a more arty design, so my void is much bigger and it, I just simply made it out of half of a plastic bauble, a gift bauble that came at Christmas. So you can use objects, uh, you don't have to use the salt or sand. But as you make an impression in, very often it will create the mound naturally for you. But if you're not using a joined up design, rather like the one I first showed, then you may want to use an object that the plaster can flow around. Don't use an expensive object though. Don't use your crystal glassware because it will get spoiled. And I've got, what I've got is I've got a, like a little kind of um, one of those things that you get in um, hotels that they can Oh yeah, them. yeah, perfect. Oh, that's all right, yeah. I can use that and push that in. Yeah, so um, with this round design, I simply used um, a small glass and turned it upside down yeah. and used the circles to make um, an impression into the, the salt. And more about this one later. So um, can you put up image three for me, Leslie? Image three, I will do. Hang on a second. Image three. Okay. So, image 
，那是这样，对，是。Okay. Yeah. Yeah. More like what I'm doing. Okay. In this, in this one, one of my experimental pieces, I decided to do、um, shells, and I, I thought I'll join them all up with different shells. But where I've put the red arrows, you can see there are there are gaps in the design. So. If you pour your plaster in, those areas are going to be very thin. So what you've got to do is somehow deepen the gap between to make sure you get a good amount of plaster in there. Otherwise, your frame will be very flat, fragile. So I just used literally、um, the base of a spoon and. Pressed down in between the gaps just to make it a bit deeper in between without spoiling the impression. Now salt, and I, I've still to experiment a lot with sand, can be crumbly. So if you're using the same object, so pressing it in and lifting it out again, and then pressing it in and lifting it out, you've got to be careful as you're working round that. Crumbs of salt don't land. Little lumps don't land on your prior impression. Otherwise, I'll show you later. This starts to spoil the cast,、uh, your plaster mold as it as it comes out. So, okay, Leslie. Yes,、yeah, see you starting to make your impression then. Well, I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to、um, go on to. Full screen again, and so you're gonna. You want me to start doing my impression, yeah? Yeah. If we, if you can have the camera on, just so people can、oh, yeah. see. So what you're gonna do, Leslie, is、um, press in quite firmly and carefully, and then when you lift it out, or are you placing all objects in one and making the frame? Design all in one go, Leslie, or are you using the same object and lifting? No, I'm、it? not using the same object. So can I leave them in there? You can leave them in there while you're you're creating,、and、which is what I did with、it、the shell. It's quite difficult. I have to be honest. That it was quite tricky to get that out.、And、yes. Now,、so, um, yeah, I use I use the end of a fork and just gently raise it, and that helps to keep the impression clear. Yeah, ha ha! This has got a little thing on it. That's handy because I'm very aware what you're saying about don't get bits of. Yeah, and that is the tricky bit. This is、oh. the most difficult piece bit of it, I think. Yeah, because you're wanting to make sure that you get a clear and clean impression. Yeah. Okay, let's try something a bit bigger. <laughs> try something. Let's try this. Is that? That was because now the sand, the salt is quite hard. Yeah. To get a decent kind of dip in it, you need this to... may. Yes, it's a it is a fine balance between having too much water or the salt or sand being too crumbly, because if it's too dry, then the sides just collapse in. If it's too wet, it does become like concrete, and it's hard to push the objects in. So what I did was I put far too much water in the first time, and I just couldn't make an impression at all. So I just left it for a couple of days to dry out. Or you can pour more salt in or sand in. And strong and pushing it hard. <laughs> 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 yeah, good. Yeah, see that one where it's spindly. I can see that.、Um, that may not make such a good impression. That may not look so good when it comes through the other side. Yeah,、either. and it is about experimenting.、So、with, you... a, with a,、um, a, I'm going to use a shell. Which way up? That way? Oh, that oh way? you're、um, the other way up, Leslie. That yeah,、way. because you want the scallop design coming out, don't you? Yes, I do. So the design goes face down. Right, that's maybe where I went wrong. And you're looking for objects that, as I said, make a clear but probably fairly simple pattern or well, design. That's worked, that's worked really nicely. That yeah, shells work really well. 
and oh, salt and the great thing the great thing with salt on shells is it starts you know because um, the sea is salt water yeah so it starts to look like a natural sort of coral reef i um like this piece that i was showing it's starting to look like a coral reef because the salt crystals are growing on it this is um this is a disaster piece which is why it's not got a hole in the middle it's supposed to have another hole joining it but <laughs> I will come on to all my mistakes later so you can learn from them. <laughs> yes. I'll just... That's quite an interesting shape. And I think... I think if I put something there, because that looks quite thin. In that, like you were saying, you don't want any thin areas, do you? Yes. I mean, if, if you want... The other way to do it is to create your, your trench first, either with a, a piece of wood or, or something, and then press um, your impressions into the trench. And then you've already got a trench built, so the plaster's going to go down, and then you firm down the impression into the base. And that way you haven't got to worry about um, the impressions being continuous all the way round. No. Okay. Right, okay. I think, let me show you, have a, have a close in look at that. What do you think? Yeah, that seems to look right. So you can see that Leslie's got a mound, a rectangular mound in the centre. That will be her void and then she's got the objects around it. The frames for the exhibition, by the way, can be any shape. They can be completely irregular, they can be oval, they can be heart-shaped, they can be circular, square, you name it, they can be anything. It's entirely up to you, there's no restrictions. We are asked that the frames are around about the measurements given in the details. And anyone who hasn't heard about the exhibition before, I'm gonna put my email address up so you can just email me if you're interested. And um, afterwards, we're gonna send out to everyone who's registered, we'll send this film and we'll send all the details of how you participate. So don't worry too much. Yeah. Um, yes, we, we ah, are. Can I use my mobile torch to cast a shadow? Hang on a second. I don't know, you very clever people. I don't know, can I? Yeah, how does that work? Yeah, it's a little better, Leslie. We can we can see that you've made an impression. Yeah, and you're happy with it and you've checked that no lumps of salt have have fallen into the trench. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I can see okay. it better now. That's really helpful, whoever suggested that, because now okay. I can see it better as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I think there's a little bit here that is a bit vulnerable that I needed to kind of deal with. And yeah, that's a real top tip, that one, because look, I can now see quite clearly there's a key, an S, a shell, the heart, the um, cross and everything. So yeah, Okay. top tip, use a mobile phone camera. <laughs> Thank you, whoever that was, I'll check. Lorraine. Hi. Thank you, Lorraine for um, giving us that top tip. Oh yeah, that would be a good tip, yes. <laughs> um, Thanks, Lorraine. Now I, can, now I can see myself as well as you guys can see. Okay. Any we, other tips are uh, welcomed and received well? <laughs> absolutely, yes. As I said, I'm far from an expert in it. I, I feel a bit of a fraud running the workshop. <laughs> there we go. As long as everyone's having fun, that's the main thing. You're doing brilliantly because I've never done anything like this before and I was like, I don't even know what you're, you're talking a foreign language, so. <laughs> okay, Leslie. Well, it looks like we're ready to make the plaster, but the, before we do, we're going to make the hook that goes in the back because that's the thing that's so easy to forget. And then you find you've poured your plaster in and you're hurrying to make the hook if you're anything like me. Well, so, it, oh, yeah. Fine. Uh, 
garden wire, anything that's fairly strong wire that you've got around the place because it's just got to hold the weight of your plaster cast. So you need about a piece about this long so you can see it against the measurement of my face. Hang on a minute. Hang on a sec. Nicola, could you turn your um, sound off, please? Oh, sorry. Nicholas, sorry. <laughs> Otherwise, we're, we're all going to be watching you, guys, Nicholas, and I'm sure that's not what you want. <laughs> okay. So, right. What? So, about this, about this long. Yes, that's right. So, okay. what I do, uh, it's up to you, but I, so that the plaster can get a good grip, it's going to, I don't know, get a good grip, I just use the back of a a fork or spoon or knife and I fold the ends over so it creates like a kind of hook at each end. Can you see that? Okay, so I've done it on my fork. One on that end and one. So Lorraine's saying it's about six inches, this piece of Yeah, ten, about ten. Yeah, that sounds about right. Or she's ten measured. centimeters, I think. I put oh, centimeters, maybe. Might be. She might have said centimeters. Ten inches does that. You <laughs> said six inches, actually. So that's my, that's my hook. Okay, so and my hook. The, is... the little hook pieces at the end, you know, the little loops, just give the plaster more to hold on to. Oh, okay. So there you are. That's what I've done. So you've got your your hook made. Is that right. That's it. Yeah. Okay, well done, where Leslie. Am I, where am I putting it, Jane? <laughs> well, just put it somewhere where you can get hold of it fairly easily at the moment, Leslie. It's okay. just a process that over there. So you've got it ready well. made. So what we're doing next is we're going to mix the plaster. Okay, so I'm just so, this out of the way. Okay. So what you need to do, Leslie, is and anyone else who is doing it alongside. You need to make sure that this is where you put your gloves on. Oh. Gloves. Preferably on both hands. <laughs> De definitely on your right if you're right handed or left if you're left handed because that's the hand you'll most be using. But it's best to have them on both. So your mask you need to have on. Your clothes protected. <laughs> so it's my apron. And some form of protection for your eyes. So I've just got my reading glasses. You can use plain sunglasses, anything, as long as you can see. Safety goggles are obviously best, but um, you know, in these lockdown times, it, we have to make use of what we've got at home. So once you're safely donned, you need to take any old bowl. I've got an old Christmas pudding bowl or it can be a plastic bowl anything that you've got to hand that you won't want to use for cooking again and then you need to fill it with water now how much water you need um, will depend on the size of the frame that you're making um, but broadly between 200 and 300 mils will pretty much be enough water and you'll have enough plaster for most most size frames that we're designing or creating so at 200 the mils, exhibition. Yeah. 200 if, mils you say of water? Two, two, 200 to 300. Maybe okay. maybe do 300 for yours Leslie. Okay, hang on a minute, I'm just going to go and pour some of this water away. Now, the important thing to remember is use cold water, because if you use hot water, this will immediately speed up the hardening process, which may not give you time to work with it. It will start hardening. It's also more dangerous because if you get your finger trapped into it, um, then you've got trouble um, pulling it out. So you always use cold water and you always add powder to water, not the other way around. Okay. You're scaring me to death. 
<laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm a bit overboard because I know I'll end up responsible. Yeah. <laughs> themselves. Yeah, we're doing Zoom and I have to kind of try and get someone on the phone to come and help me get my hand out. Yeah, no, I, I won't put my hand in, I promise. Right, okay, I've got the water. So am okay. I putting the water in the bowl? Put water in the bowl so it's ready. Just pour it all in, that's it. Right, that's in. Right, now before you start adding the powder with a tablespoon, because you don't want to do it in teaspoon size, you want it big. Before you do that, Leslie, could you put up image five for me? I'm really asking you to multitask here, aren't I? Oh, <laughs> Sorry. Oh, fine, let me just, um, I just need to... I just need to do this. Hang on a sec. I have to come out of full. I have to come out in deep of view. Screen share. Um, hang on a minute. So it's image five, yeah, Leslie. I'm just trying to find image yeah, five. Yeah, no, I just thought I'd remind oh, you. Okay, image five. There we are. Found image five. So then I screen share image five. Share. Okay, so this is a, a previous mix that I was making. And I want to show you this because um, there's a clear way of the, knowing the correct amount of plaster to water. So if you add a tablespoon at a time, at first, the powder will just easily um, go into the mix, but gradually it builds up almost like a volcano. And how you know you've got the right amount of plaster in the water to make a strong enough mix is eventually you'll end up with a little island. Now you have to leave it enough time to see if that island's going to disappear. Now, if it does, you need to add a little bit more and probably add, you know, just a quarter of a, a tablespoon at that point. So when the island doesn't disappear into the water is when you've got the right amount of plaster to water mix. So that's what you're looking for, Leslie. Okay. So if we can switch back to you. <laughs> okay. So let me have so just just add a, you know a few tablespoons at a time. Careful, do it slowly I because my gloves on, don't I? Yeah, you've got your mask on, haven't got you? My mask on. Yeah, because this <laughs> is where you can start accidentally breathing in plaster powder, and that is dangerous for your lungs. Yeah, we don't want any of that. Kind of, it's a bit like floating islands at the moment. Yeah, just keep adding. I think you'll see when it starts to create a volcano. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not yet. It just looks like a coke float at the moment. If you have the mix, you know, not enough powder to water, your frame will be too weak and it will break as it comes out. Keep going, Leslie. I would okay. think one more. One more, do you think? Give it time to soak. Is it disappearing? It is starting to disappear. There is a little bit of a volcano -y island in there now. It's kind of fizzing. Yeah, that's fine. But that is mm, starting to disappear. That's why. And this, this is another reason why using cold water is so much better because you've got time for it to work with. It's not going to solidify anytime soon. No, you can see it's disappearing, can't you? I'll use my, yeah. I'll use my phone. What, what we want to get to is where it stops disappearing. Can you see that? Yeah. A little tiny mound now. It is still disappearing, though. Should I put a bit more in? Yeah, you could put, um, say, a teaspoon size in and see what that does. all disappeared okay we'll put some more in then there's
We've got a dual volcano here. <laughs> a very, very dormant volcano. Oh no, don't let the cat. It's all right, I'm going to share the cat. The cat needs to... She hasn't got a mask on. <laughs> She's not doing the health and safety. Right, okay, so it's a... Yeah, you I think it still needs a little bit more, doesn't it? Because that's still disappearing. Okay. Yeah. I don't know where to end up with this like solid mass that I can't move. Still, yeah, that's still going. Okay. But I do feel we're getting there. We're near. Yeah. There. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> When you've done it a couple of times, you get to recognise when you've done it. I made too weak a solution. I thought I had my volcano, but I didn't didn't let it give it time for it to disappear. No, this is the thing, isn't it? It's like making jam. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> keep your. I think that might be. It. I think we might be there. Yeah. It looks, as far as I can see from here, Leslie, it looks like you might be about there. So keep your glove on. Look. Oh, okay. Can you see that? Yeah. And that's not really disappearing, is it? It's just around the edges, around the edges but not in the centre. But there is yeah. definitely a mound now in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Well, put your glove on. And what I want you to do is, with your gloved hand... And whichever hand you normally use for writing, put your hand into the mix. <gasps> you want to put my hand in it? Yeah, very, with the gloves on very quickly. And what you're doing is it's like making a crumb for pastry. So what you're doing is making sure you've not got any lumps in the plaster. So just do it quickly, Leslie, now. It's quite runny. It's quite runny and what you're searching for is any lumps and if there's any lumps there just press them between your thumb and forefinger and get rid of them. Okay. And when you're sure you've got a smooth consistency you can pour your plaster over your impression. However if you've got some impressions that are quite delicate you might want to use just a tablespoon to start with, just to feel the delicate impressions. Okay, so and, I'm just rubbing this. And don't, These gardening gloves are actually quite good for this because you can, you know, do. Yeah, I do. I do find these gloves are, are really good at it. You can really feel the lumps through it, and they give you good protection. Mm -hmm. But obviously, not with any holes in. No, well, I'm going to, shall I go and put this? I need to wash this glove, don't I? Just, I move. just quickly. Rinse it under the water, yeah. Cold water. There we go. Right, okay, that's that. So I'm going to move that over. Okay. okay, now don't pour from a height because if you pour from a height, it pushes the the salt or sand away and it will spoil your impression. So as I said, if you've got any delicate impressions, wow. use the tablespoon first, but you need to work quickly now, Leslie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> okay, right, okay. So I'm doing, I need my spoon, which is here. Yes, just spoon the plaster over your delicate impressions and then you can start pouring over the top. But, but try and pour as gently as possible. You're benefiting from all my mistakes here. <laughs> <laughs> We're also seeing someone who's not adept at doing this kind of thing doing it. So this is not my forte, which is okay. what I thought it would be a great can, thing for me to do. You can probably start pouring now, Leslie. Okay. And don't worry about the plaster being thin over the outer edges because you can easily break those off. One, if you take the quite, as close out. as I can and pouring it gently. Yeah. Okay. 
up to what point? So I can't see any any salt or? Yeah, if you want to, but it will be thin around the edges, but at least you'll know you've got enough in there. Okay. Now, what I should have said before you did all this, Leslie, oh <laughs> <laughs> is that if you can use a, a plastic or flexible bowl, I, is it plastic? It might be no, plastic. glass. Okay. It, it is best because the last thing you want to do is pour that runny plaster down your sink. I know. That's what I was just it completely plug your holes. So the best thing to do is when you've made your plaster, you'll be left with remains all around the bowl. Yeah. And then when when it's hardened, you can just simply flex the bowl and it breaks the plaster and then you empty it into a bin. Yeah, don't worry, that's a very, very old. So with yours, Leslie, because it's china and you won't be able to flex it, I don't want it to go rock solid. So what you can simply do is pour that into a plastic or a bin bag as a runny solution. But the last thing you should do I is pour it down your sink because it will just harden and block and you'll end up with block sinks. Yeah, no, I thought that. I thought, don't. That's when I was saying about washing my glove off. I was like, it's such a tiny amount, but if I use cold water, it won't. Will cleaning off plaster in the kitchen sink ruin the plumbing? We have just answered that, didn't we? Where did you buy the plaster? Jane sent it to me um, via Amazon. And yeah, I'm Lorraine. <laughs> <laughs> and Leslie, I sent some to Lorraine is doing um, a big window display for me, so I sent her some. Um, yes, I just ordered mine off Amazon, and it comes in. You know, the best to do is like a five kilogram. Yeah, that's what, you, that's what you got. That's what you sent me. So it's look there. You can see that. Yeah, that was quite a big pack because that I was a big to... bag for me. Poor little me. I'm going to have to make a hundred frames now. I'm going to have to get a little. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good to me, Leslie. <laughs> so, but five five kilogram tub um, before Christmas, it was about six pounds, but I, it's gone up to about ten or twelve. But um, rare commodity. Five, five kilograms will give you plenty of experiments, and you'll be able to have lots of mistakes out of it before you you get a good good frame. Brilliant. So I. Am I done? Is that me done kind of thing for, until it goes hard? Yes. Now, in terms of it going hard, um, plaster. No, the next thing, sorry, Leslie, is to get your Ooh, hook. This is hook, what I'm always, it? always. Yeah. So you, you have to decide which is going to be the top of your impression. So okay. don't put it too near the edge, Leslie. You want it where your trench was where you were making your impressions. <laughs> Whichever I remember now. I don't remember. <laughs> Whichever was your top, yeah. you just want to press it in and hold it. And you won't have to hold it very long. And you can test letting go and it will just stay there. If it starts to flop, just hold it again for uh, a few, you know like 30 seconds and then try again. There we go. It seems to have stopped. So as, as long as your circle pieces at the end, you know, where we made the little hooks yeah. are embedded into the plaster, then that will hold. Don't press it too deeply in, otherwise it might come out the other side. No, I've given it a bit of a push. So this is, you can see my, my hook on my um, frame that didn't work. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. So I better pull that out a bit. Otherwise, <laughs> we might have a green hook coming right through the other side of my frame. Yeah, yeah. that's it. So you don't you, you just want the ends embedded into the plaster so it will hold. Oh, yeah, I can see the ends now. So that's that's fine. There you go. Right. Hopefully. OK, that is it. Job done. Um, the, the plaster dries quite quickly in 20 minutes it starts to really cure in two hours but don't remove it until the following day so 24 hours later don't be tempted 
because it's so exciting to see what's come out. Don't be tempted just because it feels hard to take it out after two to five hours because it will break. Wow. As mine. <laughs> That's why I've only got half a frame because I was too impatient. <laughs> well, I'm terribly impatient, so I'm going to have to like hide it in a cupboard or something. Okay. I was just about to move my laptop and managed to touch a tiny bit of plaster, so I went and immediately washed my hands. So, so I'm going to try and demonstrate here. I should have had a piece made for you, really, but things didn't go right yesterday. So I've just embedded um, an already hardened piece. I don't know how far you can see this. So what you're looking to do is where the edge of your frame is to get it out, just dig your fingers gently into the salt so that they're going, you can feel that they're going under the hardened base and then gradually lift. Don't try and yank it out. It will gradually come and you can feel it releasing. But if you try and force it, you might get a crack. So it's a very gentle process. You're just looking to, to dig round the edges of your frame and lift it out. Because mine's got the foil liner, I presume I'll be able to pull, pull up a bit like cling film, I'll be able to pull it up and then peel. You the will, edge. or if you're using a hardened um, edge. So for example, let's see where I've got it. Can't see where I've put it now. I've got- you have a quick look around one, Jane's kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I've got one ready prepared to make another design here. So I've used um, an old edge of a cake tin that I won't use again um, for baking um, so to make the outer edge of my frame. So when I come to take this out, I will gently pull this up. So there's no base to the edge of my cake tin. Yeah. Um, the base is, it's, is it's the one thought. of those rings. So I will gradually lift it out. It's like taking a cake out, literally. Mm -hmm. You just do it very gently and support the underneath with your hands as much as possible. And it will just gradually come because it's it's set basically. So now that that's the process. I'm just going to give you the benefit now of all my mistakes. So, Leslie, can you put an image that's headed mistake one up? Leslie, you've got, you're muted. What image would you like first, Jane? Mistake one, please, Take Leslie. One. Mistake one. Yeah. There's mistake. lots of them. Yeah, mistake <laughs> one, I found it. Right, mistake one. Okay, hang on a sec. Screen share. I said to Leslie, they say the best trainers are the ones who have just learned. Well, that's definitely me and I'm still learning. <laughs> so there we go. Okay, you can see this was my very first attempt and I had too weak a solution to the plaster. So I didn't let that volcano top settle. And so as I took it out, it just broke. So can we have mistake two up? <laughs> mistake two. Okay, <laughs> mistake, mistake two. Mistake two, I find here. Okay, screen share. I'm sure there's an easier way of doing this, but I don't yeah. know what it is, so. Okay, mistake two. Um, this is where I tried to make an impression um, there was a hole in a piece of wood and I just found it in the garden. So I thought this would make a good, good impression. Well, firstly, the wood impression didn't come out very well. So you have to look at the objects that you're going to get um, used to make your design with and really think, are they going to look good when they come out? Because uh, mm -hmm. The best way of doing it is maybe paint it white and see how it looks. I don't know, but this frame broke because I lifted it out after two hours instead of waiting 24. <laughs> that, okay. That's gonna so, be me, isn't it? <laughs> if we can go on to mistake three. Mistake three, okay. And um, mistake three is that one. 
Okay, screen share, mistake three. Right, this is where I use shells to make um, an impression. So I think we, I showed you an image earlier where they were embedded into the salt. Now you can see on the left hand side, um, the impressions weren't so clear. Um, they're not as quite as bad as they look there because the salt crystals are growing over it now, which is quite beautiful in a way. But um, on this mistake, I forgot to put the hanger in, which you can see on the image on the other side. That's the back of it. And I failed completely to put the hook in. So I, I can rectify that in a way, but it's just a real hassle. But if anyone wants to enter the exhibition and they forget the hanger, but they really like the frame and want to put it in, that's fine. Just leave it, give it to me without the hook in and I will fix it for you. So move, kind, Jane. moving on to idea and mistake four. <laughs> idea and mistake four. Uh, idea, yes, you called it ideas and weaknesses. Uh, but yeah. weakness, yes. Yeah, okay. that, that will be it. That's yeah. the one. Okay, screen share that one. Okay, now this one I decided to make... Um, like a shield, a Viking shield. And so I wanted to design around the edge. So literally how I did this was I just pushed a matchstick down into the salt to give an edging, which has come out really well in places. So it's, it's a, an idea for a design, but because it's the edging, it, I, what I forgot is how fragile plaster is. So you can see it's broken in places. Now, this may have a certain attraction in itself because it looks more like an artifact. But the other fault is you can see I tried to press little impressions of Viking figures in. And I haven't, I either haven't looked carefully enough to see that salt hasn't fallen into the impressions because you, you only get like little ideas of faces and shields here. It's actually really lovely because it's just- <laughs> Yeah, I know it? there is a certain <laughs> something about it. I know. Right, Pompeii. Um, or, yes, it is very much like that. Or I have poured the plaster from too high a position and instead of spooning it over first. So that's why I'm saying if the impressions are delicate, um, spoon the plaster over those delicate impressions first because I think the pouring motion actually pushes the salt away and I can show you this more clearly further on but if we can move on to idea and mistake five yeah I've seen that one now <laughs> yeah a mistake five there we go screen share idea and mistake five now, uh, you saw this piece earlier, and you can see, um, if you look at the bottom image, there's uh, holes in it, and I wanted to put threads um, around the, that central design. So I decided to use straws. So I've literally taken a paper straw and cut it, and I wanted four holes, and I inserted that into the plaster, or into the impression before pouring the plaster. And that way, because I'm using paper, when it's hardened, you can easily take them out because you just literally scrunch the tops of the straw so it becomes flat. And then you can easily twist and pull it out. And the the plaster won't break when you pull the straws out. So that's just an idea. If you want holes in your design, you can use um, straws to make it or think, you know, straws come in different sizes. So if you want slightly bigger holes, um, just look around for a bigger paper straw. Um, and it works really well. If you can't pull it out, you can wash it because paper goes soggy. So you can also design a hot, a tube out of cardboard or whatever. Um, what the, plastic, so if you had a plastic reusable straw or a metal reusable straw, would that work? Um, yes, it probably would actually, Leslie, because you could gradually twist 
the, you know, just, just circle it as you're pulling at the same time and plaster will will give that's why you know I got my cork out easily from the plaster I left it in while it was hardening and to form my void in the center I where, love the idea of the cork in the middle <laughs> where this was a mistake is because I used a heart-shaped design and you can see where the red arrows are pointing that salt must have um, fallen in without me really looking properly at the impression before I put the plaster on because it isn't well formed towards the end of the, the tip of the heart. And that was, you know, it's all a learning process and that's why I'm showing you my mistakes to try and um, shortcut them for you. Hmm. So if we can move on to mistake six, and this is the last one then. Mistake six. That's the last one you mistake. Image six, image six, ideas, four, five, three, four, five. Image six I've got, mistake six. Yeah, yes, yeah, so maybe it is. Oh, it? there you are, I found it, don't worry. <laughs> it's me and my lack of dexterity on this uh, I'm really good on Crowdcast, but this one is, um, this screen sharing is a little bit more clunky for me. Okay. I don't use it, but I've never used it before, so. Yeah, so so on the left-hand side, you can see my prepared image in the cake tin. This is where I just used the top of a glass to make a circle design. And I used a Christmas bauble half just to make my void in the middle. Um, as you can see on the right hand side, it's spoiled because I poured the plaster in from too great a height uh, and I didn't spoon it over. And this is where I'm saying if you've got a delicate design, you can see it's come out quite nicely in places, but then there's this ridge and that's where I poured with the jug and pour yeah. the plaster in and it's pushed the salt it's gone into the salt because the plaster was heavier than the salt so that's why I'm saying use a tablespoon that's my my way of trying a way around it to see if that works and Leslie you are my experiment now so <laughs> you can tell me how you're the only you're... thing I'm worried about now is obviously I filled because I had enough plaster I filled it and I think I'm not going to have a void in the middle it's going to be all filled well I'll have a dip, it, but it, dip if, have a it, back on it if it is that void will be thin plaster yeah. and you should be able to carefully chip chip it oh, away oh, oh. and then you right. can use I haven't got it with me I don't think troubleshooting that. now we're troubleshooting now so I filled it yeah but it won't be very yeah as you say it'd be quite thin so I should yeah like you can just use an emery board plaster is very easily filed probably too easily so don't don't chip away too hard because okay. you'll get chunks breaking off but you can refine the the edges by just using sandpaper fine sandpaper or an emery board if you've got a dremel you can smarten up your design very carefully so there are ways of improving the look once it comes out right okay so if I haven't yeah. got a void because I was going to put so, that I, I forgot I was going to put that in the middle wasn't I to make the I completely forgot about that <laughs> yes but you you made a little trench by yes, I did, yes, impressions yes. in so yeah Yes. Okay, and so that's a learning process. So over to questions, really, from anybody. Yeah. Has anyone got any questions? If you want to put your um, put them in the chat, and then I'll ask you to unmute your mic one at a time. Don't all turn your mics off at once, because poor Jane will be overwhelmed. But um, Edith is saying in here, yes, are they frames or plaques? So is the void, um, are there any finished good ones to see? Have you got any finished ones that you can show? Um, no, I, I would like to say I have, but I suppose my best one was the one we showed earlier. And Lydia says, is the void to place a picture photo in or are these frames are not meant to have photos? No, they're not meant to have photos, Lydia. They're meant to be, it's the void is re representing the, um, the void that it's, the person who's gone has left in your life. 
I can't, I can't find my finished one. Oh, that's this, gorgeous though. I love was, that one. It's like yeah, an artifact. This is the one that, yeah, I feel was spoiled, but yeah. Not I really, is it? It depends how you want it to look. You have an idea in mind and that's what you expect to see when it comes out. So, but the great thing about salt is it grows crystals and it, as I said at the beginning, and it gives it that old, you know, old look, which is just lovely, I think. So, yeah. um, Dorothy, if you want to unmute your mic, you could ask your question. I'm going to put us on to gallery view so everyone can see. And then Dorothy is asking a question. Okay, I was just wondering, once you've used the sand or the salt for your mould, can you reuse it? Yeah, you can. You'll find that you get little bits of hardened plaster left over in the salt or sand. So you can either just lift those out or you can just re-sieve it and that will get rid of it. But I've, I've used the same set of salt to make uh, about six frames so far all of them with different mistakes on, which you've just seen, so. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you, Dorothy. Um, Peter, do you want to ask your question? Um, you're muted, Peter. So if you can yes. just- Yes, it yes. was just a question for the show. It, would it be an idea to have a couple of examples then to for the, for the idea to sell for the NHS? Is it not just to have one, to have three or four? You can make as many frames as you want. I, I put a restriction of one on because I've obviously involved quite a number of art groups. Yeah. And I, I thought if everybody wants to make one, I just want to make sure there's room enough. But yeah. it's quite clear now, especially as I can't get out to really motivate people. It's very hard just receiving an email saying, do you want to do this? So I'm very grateful for everyone that's come forward. Um, so I, it's quite clear at this stage, the take up rate is smaller than might have been. So yeah, make as many as you like. I, where we're exhibiting is in the horse bridge at Whitstable. Yeah, I know. We've, yeah, yeah. we've got the street facing um, gallery, which yeah. is smaller, but is on public view to everyone walking through to the beach, which hopefully by next autumn, we might get a few. <laughs> Um, and that's if the dates hold, because I'm not sure if artists that were booked in before me will give, be given my dates. But I am also at the same time holding a solo show in the in the big area and that I was holding the so solo show and they asked me, did I want the front exhibition? And I'd already got this idea swilling around in my head. So I said, oh yeah, I'll take it and I'll do the fundraiser in there. And then I'm already there because I've got to be there for my solo show. Um, and in fact, it may steal the limelight from my solo show, but <laughs> that's, that's the way it goes. Um, so yeah. I know I can hang every frame because I can overflow into my space if necessary. So yes, make as many as you like. Make as many as you want. <laughs> no, it's just yeah. for charity, so I just thought. Well, exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah That's absolutely. Why. That's and why I, I thought it would be a good idea to do this for Jane because she was having trouble getting out to show people and because I was an idiot and I had no clue what she was talking about. <laughs> I was like, right, well, do it with me because I've got no clue what you're talking about. So I'm going to come against all of the most obvious restrictions of people doing it. Yeah, so it's really when I spoke to the Blue Monkey group that I know quite well down in um, down in Eastbourne. And the two that came forward had, had already worked in plaster and then it clicked with me. That I said to Leslie, people think they've got to be an expert in plaster and I'm no expert, I've done it once before. And, you know, sometimes an artist, you think, why did you do this? Because you're doing something that's your weak area instead of your strong area. But you get an idea and if you feel it's right, you've just got to run with it. So <laughs> I, I think that's the that's the best ideas because I always think I haven't done that before. So, yeah. I'm, probably be, so I'm probably going to be all right at it because I've never yeah. done it and failed. So I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Lydia, um, thank you, Peter, if you don't mind thank muting you. your mic. Lydia, you've got some questions. Yeah, I was wondering if uh, it needs to be a frame shape if it's not holding a photo, a photo in it. 
And also I wanted to ask if, uh, are we meant to color it, paint it? Or... Um, well, the idea is that they, um, right, let me go back a bit. I don't know if any of you have seen Rachel Kneebones, um, 366 days, I think it's called, at the V&A, um, which is like the Tower of Babel, but she's used um, porcelain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so the beauty of it is, is the white. And if you think how we you, you traditionally recognise death, it's um, mm -hmm. gravestones in a churchyard. So I'm after the impression of subtlety. So I'm not saying that you can't paint or, or embed things, but I'm asking for a delicate look rather than bright, bright reds. The frames, the reason for the void um, is also because, you know, a photo of a person is missing, mm -hmm. but it's also because when they're all hung together, I intend to thread them all and link them all with a delicate, very thin red cotton, because mm -hmm. that's what's happened in 2020. You know, whether we've lost someone or not, we've all linked together in, in this joint way, because we're all, all suffering in some way or other. And it's brought out that community link that we are all connected. What, what one person does impacts on another. So that's why they'll all be linked together. No, that, that's wonderful. Yeah, I love the white. I love yeah. white. Okay, yeah. that's great. Thank um, you. Oh, and the frame shape, it has, is because any shape, of- Any shape you want, irregular, you know, my shell shape was irregular. It can be circular, anything you want, literally. Yeah, Thank and you. if you want to work larger for some reason, just email me because as long as I know yeah, I've only got a certain set number of large pieces, then, you know, it just helps with my curation ideas as we're going. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Thank hi, you. Rowena. Hi, Rowena. <laughs> hi. I hope my one's going to be at the front, Jane. My masterpiece. <laughs> yes. um, Sarah Mason is asking, I'll get Sarah up just in a second, but she's saying um, a bit more information about it. We're going to email all of that out, Sarah, after this with the recording. So someone else asked, have we got the recording? Yes, we're recording this live. So everyone who has signed up for this event will get a copy of the recording, a link to the recording. And it'll have all the details about how to contact um, Jane etc in there and with regard to viewable online what I was going to suggest actually is we have a hashtag called pure art 360 and if you all want to post your um, what you make onto Instagram and use the hashtag pure art 360 that will arrive on our website because we have a feed for that hashtag onto our website. So we'll be able to see everything. And then Sophie, our wonder, our wonderful Sophie, who does all our Instagram, will also be able to see it and she'll be able to share them on our stories and tag you, etc. So yeah, you everyone who makes them, if you can take a photo, um, that's the first thing we can get to make sure that we see everything. Use the hashtag pureart360 and that will arrive on our um website and we can do some sharing. Sophie's got some questions about that. I'll, I'll get her up in a second. And she might ask you to do something else. And the other thing I was gonna say is Jane and I will have a conversation about that because there may be something else that we can organize to get them all up online. Because I do think as it's a charity, it, and now we know that there's gonna be a fair few that we might be able to do something else. So yeah, I, I, did, I did try to make a Facebook page, but I unfortunately had the words fundraising in there. So when it was complete, they wouldn't let me upload it. So I've got to think of a way around that. Yeah, yeah. We'll have a, Jane and I will have a chat and we'll work out a way of getting them all up online. Don't worry. Yeah. We'll, and maybe even an Instagram account might be better. But, I, so Sarah, you had another couple of questions if you want to unmute your mic. Sarah Mason, did you have any more questions? Something about card as well? Do card impressions work if you don't have shapes? Yeah, I used I used some wooden shapes, so that would be the same as card, wouldn't it? 
you may yeah, uh, there's lots of YouTubes um, about how to design a frame and you've just got to think um, in a way you're thinking in reverse. So whatever you're pushing down is going to be the one that the design that protrudes. So if you carve into cardboard or mount board, then that is going to go down into the frame. Whereas if you place a risen object on the top, that will be a raised design. So you've just got to think about it as you're doing it. Yeah. Yes. And um, it's sorry, like, Sophie, you had a couple of questions if you want to, about the Facebook, uh, about the hashtag. Oh, well, yeah. So it's just um, a hashtag. We, we could have one for this project specifically. We could. Um, yeah. And then we can do a folder in Facebook in the Pure Arts group that if everyone just sends me their pictures, then I can just make them into a folder exhibition in the Pure Arts. There you are, Jane. That's solved. OK, if we do that, can people who aren't part of Pure still access it? OK, it. that's great. Fantastic. Thank you very if much. You, if you just message me or call me and we can yeah. talk your ideas about it. Yeah, sure, Sophie. Thank you very much for that. I think making a new hashtag is a good idea. But for in the interim, if you want to use the Pure Art 360, because that one definitely arrives on to the... Um, and Sophie's got another thing to say. <laughs> Is it both? So you can have the Pure Arts one will go to the Pure Arts page, but we yeah. can do one that's about NHS and try and link with. Yeah. So the project has its very own identity as well as the Pure yeah. Arts. Yeah. Um, okay. Edith's got a question. Edith's if I can... got a question. Go, Edith. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I put it earlier in the um, in the comments, but uh, miss, does, it miss... what, does it matter what kind of salt? Can you use um, dishwasher salt or salt? That's well, here? I haven't used it, Edith, but have a go because dishwasher salt is is a cheap option if you've got it in the house already just just give it a go and see what it does yeah just make sure you know you've got your protective equipment on to help you yeah that's it <laughs> you're you're doing better than me because I, I i did go for the full visor look <laughs> if i wear in the town charlie literally my 13 year old won't walk with me but um so lorraine saying can we also do it on instagram yes we'll look at how we get it up on instagram yeah well. yeah do it on instagram yeah if, so if, the hashtag is instagram or facebook yeah. if people you know are interested and want to participate if you can just point them to me and then I can make sure that they've got all the information so it, it's a project where you know the communication just has to be quite tight so that people have the right information so anyone is welcome to do it they don't have to be an artist they can be a creative they can just want to have a go I have put a thing in the details about children because of the dangers of working with plaster. And that's the thing I was just wanting to add about while the plaster is setting and the equipment that is, you know, like the bowl that's left drying, just make sure that pets, Leslie, your cat. My cat, wow. <laughs> cat and dog are over there. Pets and uh, and children can't put their fingers in the drying plaster, so please put it up out of reach. Just treat it just a bit like I'm thinking. Up. Treat it a bit like super glue that you yeah, let your yeah. children go anywhere near because you'd end up yeah. in the hospital. So treat it like super glue. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, you've just yeah. got to think sensibly around things. Yeah, it is health and safety is a massive is a massive thing, and it's just like. You don't want to hurt yourself, do you? You don't want to do these things and end up hurting yourself. Rowena's got a question. Go, Rowena. Right. Now, I was just going to say you could get to use white clay to make frames if that would be safer. You can white. get air. You can get air, air drying clay. I have oh, to use that is, with this to make, is this to make the impression or to make a frame? Well, no, I was just thinking rather than letting them loose with plaster. And it would still be white. Yeah, I mean, I would say it's an idea. If, if children are having a go, yeah, that's probably a really good good just option. For yeah, children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no adults. Okay. Not, none of you adults take that. 
<laughs> scary thing like no me. just the children just the children but I used to do air dry clay with my kids when they were little yeah. and um so Sophie you could have a go with that with your little ones <laughs> <laughs> I think parents have got enough with homework and <laughs> 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 thank you so much it's been absolutely brilliant i'm going to put jane back up on on full screen speak of you so she can give your close your closing words on this and then we will um finish for today it's been brill thank you okay well it's it's just to say thank you very much to everybody for a attending the workshop whether you're participating in the exhibition or not but a really special thank you to everyone who said they're going to have a go and I wish you all luck with it and it's just finally to say that 70% um, of the sales will go to the NHS 30% will go back to yourselves but we've asked if we can set the prices because we don't want you know 101 different prices just for making the sales on the spot easier and so if we can determine the prices 30 percent will go back to you which will cover your materials hopefully or help towards it but if you want to contribute your 30 percent to the nhs it will go straight to there i'm paying for the exhibition i am commuting uh, curating it with a help from Lorraine. I've got Lorraine and Sally who was on here earlier doing window displays. Um, but anyone who wants to come along, you'll all be invited to the private view. Your name will go down equally as part of the exhibition. You can all put on your CVs that you've exhib exhibited in it. So there's lots of pluses and yeah, just thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, that's that's actually brilliant, Jane. And I think it's just an amazing opportunity that you have um, developed. You know, you had a very difficult year um, last year and you've really turned it into something amazing. And I'm so proud of you. Um, oh, thank you, that. Leslie. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. yeah. It really, it really turned yeah. it into something really purposeful and amazing for everyone to get and so inclusive that everyone can get involved in. And like we were talking yesterday about um, with the big draw girls on Crowdcast, you know, this is something that everyone, it's really accessible. Um, it's not too expensive. It's really accessible and everyone can get involved in and it's something to look forward to, isn't it? It so, is. It yeah. will happen even if the dates shift slightly because lockdown 473 happens, <laughs> but it will happen. So it's worth, you know, spending some time doing this. It really gives you a motivation and inspiration. So you're an inspiration, Jane. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I think Fran's just got one last question. Oh, or... Fran, have you got a question? Um, just absolutely thank you very much. But this could be considered drawing by the big draw. This is yes, not... definitely. Yes. Yeah. This is not separate from no the, no um Sophie and I you could let them know about yeah. it. Yes, yes, I will do because I was on yesterday's uh, thing yeah. about it. Yeah. Sophie and I are having a meeting after this to talk about the big draw, among other things. So we will be applying as pure, and then this will be one of the um projects that we'll include in that. But there's uh, you know, we're waiting for ideas from you, you guys. So um, we're going to submit as a, as a business and then we'll wait for all the projects. And as they said, they'll announce a theme in March. So we can't, you know, once, once we know what the theme is, we can start doing things. But I'm this sure is we can the make big sure draw, it fits yeah. for the big draw. Um, I'm sure we can make sure that um, everything fits. I'm very good with spin. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are, Leslie. <laughs> I'm very glad to have you on board. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Thank you all so much for joining Thank us. You. As I say, we will send out the recording and we'll send out all the follow-up materials. And um, and once Sophie and I have had a chat, we'll give you some more information about all of the promotion and everything. So yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Fantastic. I'm going to clear up my Thank kitchen Thank you very much. Now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to clear up my kitchen. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Take okay. care. Bye. Bye, Bye. everyone. Thank you.